we're going to go over the entire library, as I'd call it, of digital marketing from idea, a concept of business, and or established business that just hasn't quite launched yet on digital in the digital world. The first step is basically idea or business, right? So you can have a story and a history as a family owned business and or product, service or product, but you haven't really launched it on to the internet yet. If you haven't done that, if that's your case, I hope that you catch up soon. Or you can have an idea that, and you would like to launch your business online first and foremost. The very first thing that needs to happen there is <clears throat> basically your logo, identity, and your unique selling point. Your logo needs to be uh, hand sketched is a great way to do it. And then after it's hand sketched, uh, you need to go to a designer and or somebody that knows uh, a to how to have your logo take your logo from your concept, your hand, hand sketched concept into fruition and to have it digitally uh, archived, I'll just, I'll just call it. And a great place for this is 99designs. We use 99designs and or we help our clients manage the entire process of 99designs uh, with a tiny bit of a markup fee. And it's a great place to go and get your logo designed uh, as long as you know and you have some type of idea of where to start with your logo. Your identity is identity and your unique selling point is another thing that just includes your story, where you're coming from, where you're from, uh, why you're doing what you're doing, and what makes you different than the other competitors out there. The next step in this process is market research. Your market research uh, includes you know, looking at other companies uh, that might already be doing what you're doing and uh, finding out where they're advertising, uh, what kind of content they have, what kind of websites they are uh, operating their business under, uh, what kind of trends, you know, using things like uh, tool, uh, trend tools like Google Trends, um, Answer the Public, things like that, uh, Ahrefs, uh, SEMrush, and using those tools to start digging and finding and, and serving up uh, data based on uh, these tool the, the uh, traffic that's in search, traffic that's in social media. Um, if it's a product, a uh, great place to go is Amazon, finding comments and things like that uh, for um, you know looking at pain points that people have and seeing how you can offer solutions for those pain points. The next phase would be developing personas. Uh, if you're, especially if you're going to be launching a product, personas are key to being able to convert your squeeze and your funnel pages, uh, being able to speak to the right audience, and having at least a few different personas uh, panned out and developed out so that you can have your different uh, ads and do split testing and funnels and things like that so that you can develop your strategy when you do get to the point of launching. At that point, you want to start thinking about content, content creation. This includes uh, video, audio, text, images, and make it good too. You're the business owner, you're the person with the idea behind this new launch, right? You want to make sure that your content is awesome. And it doesn't have to be shiny bells and whistles. It doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have, you know, tuxedos and suits and perfect studio lighting, but it has to be authentic. And try to make sure that the audio on, if you're doing video first content, make sure that the audio is there. Uh, but behind the scenes, uh, you know, just really good. Um, so the most important Thing with content creation just make sure it's authentic the next uh, process would be website development and really until you have that logo finished and you have some type of content you're not going to be able to really start too much of your website uh, development now whoever's managing website development and and all that uh, can obviously Get the hosting set up, get your, you know, your domain registered from GoDaddy or wherever it might be. And, you know, at least create a staging site, 
and get some of the basics set up. Uh, name, address, phone number, all of that's a really important. You're going to have to have that stuff in play. Uh, but until you have content, images, things like that, it's really going to be hard for a web designer to uh, be able to move forward unless he has that stuff. So keep that in mind. Social channels would be next. Once the web design is 80% uh, you know, in, developed and designed, and you've got you know, your home page, your about us page, your contact page, terms of service, privacy policy, your footers built, your header and banners are built, your navigation's nice and streamlined, the architecture's in play, you have uh, your services uh, silo all laid out, you know, uh, or your product pages light, uh, laid out and, and serviced and, and all that structured. And again, that, that's really where that market research comes in. The market research, and you should, by the way, you really need to have SEOs helping you with the market research. Um, it's just imperative that you do proper market research so that you know how to architecture your website. You don't want to just put services and just have a sloppy developed website. And a lot of times if you go to a web designer that doesn't have some type of SEO background, you're going to get yourself in trouble because it can become a sloppy website and it's not going to perform well in search. So make sure that you have SEOs that are helping you with this point of the process of the market research so that uh, the SEOs are able to communicate to the web designers how the website should be structured. That SEO, uh, the SEOs should know enough in this market research that they're developing the architecture with sitemap. We use DinoMapper uh, so that you have some type of visual architectural um, blueprint in play before you get into the website development. At that point, you got all these things in play. You got your social media channels plugged in play, communicating with the website. They're connected to the website. They're verified with the website, YouTube channel, Facebook, Twitter, all those places. And you want to make sure the branding is very consistent throughout here. Name, address, phone number, logo. Name, address, phone, phone number, logo. Message, uh, tagline. You got to make sure you have a tagline all that you're about me all that's connected and it's very very consistent throughout this uh process okay that helps your brand visibility and that's when you start the process of digital marketing now we can get into the fun stuff digital marketing content again going back to content <laughs> video audio text images you name it load it up get it into a central place we use google drive for pretty much everything uh, so where your team can access that you want to make sure that you have inside that inside of that uh, central access you have a folder that says published and then you have a folder that says not published and that not published folder is where everybody that's under the sun in the business on the business side the internal operations is uploading everything they can so that the SEOs and the publishers most likely the SEOs and the publishers are the same thing, are able to get that content uh, quick and they are able to be efficient with that content. That way we can start publishing, right? We want to start publishing that content and at the time of publishing, we want to make sure that it's SEO'd. That includes formatting and all the gazillion things that the SEOs do when they're publishing your content. And that's where social media comes into play too. Remember, we uh, developed some social media channels here, right? Uh, in this part of the process, you want to make sure that you're not just leaving those social media channels empty. We want to make sure that the social media channels are, in fact, becoming aged assets as well. Uh, obviously, on your website too, you're publishing content on your website. Try to make sure that when you're publishing real content, that you're Publishing goes to your website first. It's indexed in search. It's owned by you. If you only publish content on social media, guess who owns it? The social media platform owns it. You don't own it. So just keep that in mind. The next thing is management reporting. You want to make sure that every time you're publishing or at least uh, 30 days or minimum quarterly, you're, you have some type of management going on. And this can be management in strategy, in all your brand strategy, or anything like that. But you want somebody overseeing these things. You want 
some type of reporting dashboard that shows you analytics to where you can pull in Google Analytics, you can pull in Google Search Console, you can pull in Facebook Analytics, you can pull in your SEO <clears throat> analytics, you can pull in all of these things. You can measure that way and you can see what's working and what's not, and then you can amplify what's working and disengage on what's not working. Remember, this whole content stage is really about developing content and again, it can come from your iPhone and you can serve it up into the uh, Common Grounds folder. And that publishing is really about publishing and dissemination of your content, right? And that's where the SEO comes in, the social media and all that. So remember, managing and reporting, extremely important. Development, this is if you really have the budget for it, if you want to develop apps, back-end stuff, or if you need a front-end uh, custom customization on your website that you know, it's like interaction based. That's where development comes in. And technology, uh, all this technology, you need somebody. And that's why all these, this management reporting kind of goes hand in hand. You want somebody that knows technology. And a lot of times uh, the SEOs definitely know uh, technology, uh, SaaS tools, things like that. Ads are kind of over here, but they are very much connected to SEO. Uh, but it's not the other way around. You don't want an advertising firm telling you that they can do your SEO. But if an SEO says that they can do your ads, it's probably not too bad of a thing. Unless that SEO is really focused on SEO and you're running high volume ads. If you're running less than 5,000 a month in ads, your SEOs can definitely handle the ads and they can manage your ads. If you're running over 5,000, you're getting into the 10, 20, 30, 100,000 dollars a month in ads. You want a real ad agency to be running those because you're going to want to be doing split testing, layered audiences. You're going to want to know what your return on an ad spend is. You're going to want to know all those things. You want to have segmented audiences, all that stuff. Uh, another tool to use for that if you were kind of a do it yourself type of business owner is Ad Espresso. You can run a lot of split tests and things like that. Uh, if you don't mind writing a lot of copy and managing all that um, and get away with doing a lot of high volume. But if you're just doing like low volume, local type stuff, um, brand awareness, visibility, stuff like that, SEOs are definitely capable of doing that. And the reason why SEOs are great at running ads, uh, as long as it's not too much um, you know, split testing, things like that, is because SEOs can look and measure at ad results and add relevancy for the pages that those, those ads are going to on your website and they can optimize the landing pages on your website to play in relevancy scores with ads especially with Google Ads so keep that in mind Google Ads especially SEO they go hand in hand email whole different ballgame here uh, you're managing a CRM you need content you need good copy and you need to know how to measure your click-through rates and your open rates um, at that point design comes in here uh, you can have uh, you know design for website design for ads design for copy uh, infographics uh, you might want to add you know full featured HTML email templates there's design comes in there as well uh, thumbnails on your YouTube videos drive more traffic and conversions you want designers that know what they're doing we use Canva um, even though we are first and foremost publishers and SEO publishers, we use Canva because it's great. We can throw up uh, the right type of uh, formatting and templates for ads, SEO, landing pages, social media. Canva's great. Look into Canva if, you don't, if you've never used Canva. Getting into the more expensive stuff, PR, this might include a full featured article in WSJ or Forbes or Inc 500 that kind of stuff is super expensive um, again SEOs can manage some of this but not all of it if you're into the very high profile stuff where you're you know uh, definitely go to a PR agency don't go to ad agency for PR and don't go to a SEO agency for PR unless it's more of the low-end PR, but if you want straight up PR, go to a PR agency. Grassroots PR, they go hand in hand. Reputation management, again, SEOs can dabble into reputation management if it's 
you know, pushing things down on the first page of search, managing your, your reviews. Um, that's super easy. Um, you know, th things like that, uh, social media rep, uh, management, things like that. Uh, SEOs, social media companies, they can handle that kind of stuff. But if it's, again, if it goes into high profile stuff, if you're a celebrity and you are absolutely 100% needing to keep any and all negative PR out of press and Twitter and off of Google, then you need a real rep management or a PR agency. So those are the nuts and bolts. Those are the different departments in digital marketing. Uh, again, um, a lot of people will say, or a lot of agency, I should say, would be, well, we're a catch-all agency. We'll do it all. We'll do it all. The problem is if you go to a so-called generalized digital marketing agency and they say that they can do it all, but they are being transparent with you, 100% transparent with you on hard costs and maybe even who they're sourcing to for getting, let's say, magazine inclusions or <clears throat> that full featured article in Forbes. Or they're saying, oh, we know SEO, but they really don't know SEO. Or they're saying, we're social media marketing. We can do social media marketing for you. But all they're doing is regurgitating and publishing uh, content and it's you know generalized stock imagery and it's just uh you know high high loads of um you know vertical publishing you got to be aware of that stuff and a lot of times these catch-all digital marketing agencies will say they do it all but what's happening is that they're outsourcing and they're outsourcing and then when the, with the people that they outsource to are also outsourcing and they might even be outsourcing. And so you're getting all the way up to, and it's like the food industry, right? Where by the time you eat that carrot, it's probably been through 10 to 12 different hands from farmer to table. And so it's very similar in the di digital marketing uh, world where by the time you're actually <laughs> talking to the tech that's got hands on, you could be seven people away and uh, middlemen, you could be seven middlemen away before you're actually getting that. So if an agency's charging you, uh, you know, for 10 hours, you might only need to be charged for two hours if you have a well-built relationship with an SEO company or you might. So my point is, is don't go to a digital marketing company for to have them design your website or to design a beautiful infographic or to design your next uh, squeeze page, go to a designer, go to a design company for that. And don't go to an advertising agency for SEO and don't go to a PR company for SEO either. So the good thing about what, the good thing about finding a strategic, like a streamlined SEO uh, slash publishing company is that SEO pretty much blends into most of this stuff with the exception of maybe high profile reputation management, high profile PR, grassroots stuff, and deep backend development. <clears throat> Everything else, uh, and maybe a little bit of email. Uh, SEOs usually don't dabble into email too much. But everything else, like SEOs are really good at designing. SEOs are really good at ads. It's, that's not their expertise but they can usually pull that off pretty well. But um, yeah, just keep that in mind. So, and then, you know, breaking down all this stuff, you know, again, content, you get the video, audio, text, you've got SEO, you've got all this stuff, right? SEO, we're really working on the user experience, the performance of your website, the performance of how this content's performing, right? Each landing page served up queries and search. We're, we're really, we're just communicating with the bots, right? The architecture of your website, the visibility, Kind of what kind of brand visibility do you have? What kind of keyword visibility do you have? Product or service? How are we getting you served up versus your competitors? And the extensive list of all that boring technical stuff that I won't go into. And design, look at how all these things overlap with SEO. Design, you have your user experience, your landing pages, banners. Uh, <clears throat> there should be a star in front of that. Uh, and two banners, great. <laughs> uh, thumbnails, infographics, and images. With publishing, uh, you've got publishing to your website, social media, repurposing content. 
you ever take a video and repurpose it? You can. You can re repurpose a video from video to audio to text to images. That's why I love video. I think video is king of content. Uh, however, it's trending that most people are listening to audio now because they are too busy uh, to, to look at anything else. So they're just driving and they're listening to audio. <laughs> I've seen a lot of people actually listen to videos and they're, they're actually just listening to the video. They're not watching the video. Podcasts and syndication, press releases, product listing. That's all publishing, right? Which goes hand in hand with the SEOs because SEOs know how to publish. They are machines when it comes to publishing because they know how to publish well. They know how to optimize what they're publishing. Social media, and again, publishing, content, copy, scheduling, consistency, ads, you got copy, audience targeting, SEO, split testing, lead gen, platforms, your return on advertising spend. PR, again here, full feature conclusions, magazines, billboards, commercials, sponsorships and partnerships, trade shows, public speaking. speaking. And then you've got your app dev, back-end website for your development category, custom functions, that's front-end website custom functions, systems and ops, company emails, internal SOPs. Your email marketing includes content copy lists, you know, list management, split testing, segmentation, list segmentation, tracking, CRO, scheduling, segmentation, uh, all that. I said segmentation, split testing. Uh, technology, SaaS tools, analytics, API integrations, setups, hosting, CRM and systems, management reporting. You want to make sure you have some type of go-to place where you don't have to log in at Google Analytics to see your Google Analytics. And you got to log in to Google Search Console to see your Google Search. You got to log in <laughs> Facebook to see your Facebook analytics. You want you want all that in one place, um, which is why I love our dashboard. We we can serve up all that information in one place. Social media channels, ads, you name it. We got it all. Email, email analytics, uh, call tracking, everything. Um, we love our dashboard that we serve up for our clients. Um, heat mapping is also very crucial for high traffic tra uh, websites that are really looking to keep people more engaged on their website. Click rate optimization. Also, this goes hand in hand with SEO. Uh, all this management reporting, most of the time SEOs can handle this stuff. <clears throat> so very, very interesting. Uh, concept from idea business to launching a brand to actually getting into the digital marketing stage. The reason why I wanted to put this together is because of the pain points that SEOs in general and we see happening in, in trending where you have these catch-all marketing companies that are they are not actually serving their clients with the right with the best stewardship possible for the for the budget. Right? You take a budget. You want to make sure that you get the best possible output for that budget you have you have any type of system you have your input and then you have your process and then you have your output well if your process is diluted if it's diluted and you have a design team saying that they're doing SEO but they're really not then you're going to have a diluted output of SEO you're not going to be ranking the way you want and it goes hand in hand with all these these um, these departments. So I hope that helps you uh, in searching for the right agency and searching for the right company to help you with your brand and your company growth moving forward and into the future. Thank you so much. God bless. This is Josh Johnson with Head Flood.